Cass, how are you doing? Yeah, good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> I, I noticed the slight, slight hesitancy there. And I can imagine that's all centering on the big news that mm. broke yesterday. And that's where we're going to have to start because we've got to get your reaction to it. This after Jurgen Klopp, let me say that again, Jurgen Klopp announced he is to step down as the Liverpool manager at the end of this season. He was appointed back in 2015 in October. His contract was due to run until mm. 2026. He only signed that a few years ago. Uh, but has now decided he wants to bow out, as I say, at the end of this season. He has won everything there is to have won mm. as a manager. Champions League in 2019, for example, before leading Liverpool to their first league title in 30 years the following season. Uh, this is what he had to say then about this big decision. This club, especially with the team we have, with all the the... the the super things we have in this club, this club needs, on top of that, a manager and it's top game um, and it's top level. And I mean, I cannot be there anymore. Then I have to tell the people, I have 100%. The other situation would have been we go in the next season and I realized, and then I knew it before and get into it and try to get somehow through it. That's not how it should be. And that's why I, I told first the club the decision, then my coaches the decision. And since today, Everybody knows it, um, and that's it. That I love everything so much, and I think everybody believes me that it's the case. I still think it's the right thing to do. Can just tell you, I did, I don't take these kind of things lightly. So I'm convinced it's right, and that's why I said it. Okay, that's just a little snippet of yeah. what he had to say, Cass. I mean, this was an absolute <laughs> bombshell. Yeah. Nobody saw this coming, which is so bizarre when you think about the world that we live in. There's always leaks. This one was kept so well hidden, mm. uh, as I say, that it surprised everybody. So tell us how you felt when you heard the news, being a Liverpool fan. Um, gutted, gobsmacked. Uh, initially really upset because I just thought, you know, I've always put Jurgen as a, you know, um, a guy that I always feel leads from his heart, and I think the passion and emotion that he has for Liverpool is typical of that that football club. Um, there's been loads of comparisons with many people, and rightly so. I think um, I think the, if you're a Liverpool fan, you've got to think. Oh, this is how I feel anyway. We got to feel really positive, positively that we've got him to the end of the season because I mm. felt if that decision was made in November, that he could have quite easily called it a day before Christmas. If things hadn't gone as well, I think Jurgen would have walked earlier. Do you think? Yeah, I do now. I think because he's made that call in November. Look, well, I've been there myself. I've made a decision on a day about something in my in my work life. Um, that you just don't think you can do it anymore. I've done that myself. Now, this is at a completely different level, but I do think people sometimes wake up and go, I've got to call time. I, this, I can't give my complete all um, for this football club. And he thinks, if I can't do that, because it's very, it nearly, it's nearly parallel with the way he left Dortmund, because he, he ended up saying the similar things. You know, the two mm -hmm. interviews are nearly carbon copy of each other. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about it yesterday in our in our sort of pre-show yeah. meeting that we always have, uh, and we said exactly the same thing. I looked at the statement that he put out when he, or certainly the the, the quotes that, were, that yeah. came out when he left Dortmund, and it, it is so carbon copy talking about you know that the Dortmund needed a manager who was a hundred percent behind them, and he. And Liverpool, likewise, he sort of said the same thing that that's what they need. They need a manager who is going to be there again and again and again. And he'd run out of energy, essentially, the man is with what all he had the, said. And the man with all the energy runs out of energy. And incredible. <laughs> and I, look, the way he drives the club, it, it's, it's, it, it's literally... I, I got my first eye opening experience with management when I watched a manager in France and his daily routine. Now, you look at their... You know, interviews are hard work for them. They have to meet medical teams. They have to deal with players. They have to put their training sessions together. And yes, they get loads and loads of help. But there's a lot of challenges within a football manager. And I think sometimes you have to understand a sabbatical from football is needed. Mm. You know, and yeah, years ago, they, I mean, Bill Shankly did it in 74. You know, walked away from a football club and left it devastated. This is very similar. It's been, you know, well aired about it. I, the Beatles... 
uh, you know, finished in 74. Remember the devastation around them breaking up? Sometimes it's just sudden. I suppose that the difference between the Shankly and Klopp scenario is that Klopp has given Liverpool time mm. to think about the successor, making that decision like he has now and having had the conversations that he must have had previously with everybody who are the game changers, the, the decision makers at Liverpool. Um, so he's given them that time, whereas obviously Shankly's was in the summer. It was mm. just after winning the FA Cup, I think it was. Yeah. And, uh, and it, did it was come a out bow out of the yeah, blue. Absolutely. It really was, yeah. As you can imagine, it was news that just shocked everybody yesterday. And, and so many callers who rang in to talk sport, there were so many varying emotions. We had you know, fans in tears, for example, uh, because no one saw it coming. The Liverpool, go on. So I was going to say, what well, isn't this the amazing thing about football? Why it's the greatest sport in my mind is how much love, and sometimes it's toxic with football and it's mm-hmm, controversial. Mm-hmm. But because we love our clubs and football ourselves, we we take a lot. Football carries a lot of baggage, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And look, you know, as well, I'm not a Liverpool fan, but even yesterday, I was I was gutted. I was yeah. thinking. No more Klopp. You know, I, listen, I know he's Marmite. There will be people yeah. that don't like him for whatever, all the antics he does on the side of a pitch and some of his outspokenness, shall we say, and some of his press conferences and his mannerisms, whatever it is. But, I mean, despite all of that, I still think he's just been an incredible addition to English football. He's brought up, built up this incredible rivalry with Pep Guardiola and Manchester mm. City. Okay, when I say rivalry, it's not to the lengths of Wenger and Sir Alex Ferguson, which felt... Or Jose and... Wenger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which felt a little bit more heated. Mm. There feels like there's more respect between Guardiola and Klopp. But in terms of what they've brought to the Premier League in recent years and that competition, I mean, it's been absolutely what about, fantastic. What about style of play? Uh, and how, Liverpool style of play? Abs- are, of course. Of play they being. are an exciting team to watch because they're all guns blazing at yeah. Liverpool. You know that. Um, but like I say, this has shocked everybody. Let's just quickly hear from yeah. Liverpool legend Phil Thompson, shall we? Because he joined White and Jordan yesterday after the news broke. And he like you've already mentioned, compared this announcement to when Bill Shankly retired in the summer of 74 after 15 years in charge of the club. Thinking back, and I know a few of the guys have been on talking about he's like Bill Shankly, whatever. The news when Bill Shankly, back in 1974, when he was retiring, this is as devastating as that news was to people. And you might be saying that a little bit, but this, this guy's took us to the pinnacle of well football again mm. and that is true when you consider what Klopp came into at Liverpool this was a team that I think on average if you go back to sort of 2009-10 and that's the more recent years before Klopp took over you would maybe say Liverpool roughly out on average would finish around 7th yeah. in the league, occasionally would compete for the Champions League places but more likely mm. less so when he came in to Liverpool, that completely changed. There was only, I think, one season, and that was last season, where they didn't finish mm. in the top four. It's the transformation that he brought to Liverpool. I, I've seen lots of people online. Oh, sort of one sa- league title and all this Yeah, sort of exactly. Stuff, yeah. Just basically saying, well, after nine years, he's only won one league title. What success has he brought? And I think there's more to it than that. I mean, he's won everything there is to have won that they've been involved in. Um, Right now, they're competing for four trophies. We've seen that previously when they Mm. were competing for a quadruple as well. But it's what he has done to that club and made it a competitive, title-challenging side. Yeah, absolutely. Everything and more. Look, sacrifices are given when managers take jobs of of this sort of, you know, a 10-year, a decade in football is a hell of a long time in the modern game. And yes, they get, obviously, the money is incredible, £15 million a year, and you think, but Klopp's walking away from this because he can't give what he once gave, but he will give it now to the end of the mm, season. Mm. For him, this is, this is a line in the sand moment. 